Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, indeed. We're picking up with day six of our Attitude of Expectancy devotion on the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along with us. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, then Tori's going to pick with the Devo. Let's do it. The scripture is Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 14, and they say this. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once he was eating with them and he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of a half mile. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Here are the names of those who are present, Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. They all met together, were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. The devotional says this, have you ever anticipated an exciting event or moment? Perhaps going on a family vacation, celebrating a birthday, or awaiting a surprise. Expectation filled the air with every breath inhaled. Excitement increased awareness and brightened up the world. Walking faster with a bounce in your steps, all seemed right in the world. It is easy to have a great attitude in those moments. How did this expectancy build? It happened because the date was approaching on the calendar. You remembered the past moments and knew what was coming would be great. This is exactly where the disciples found themselves in Acts 3 through 14. They were in a moment of great expectancy. How can we develop an attitude of expectancy? Realize that an attitude of expectancy starts and ends with Jesus. Focusing on his goodness creates an attitude of expectancy. When Jesus ascended from the Mount of Olives to his throne of glory, he left his church in an attitude of expectancy. He told them to wait for the filling of the Holy Spirit. But what exactly did they expect? Remember, the disciples had came out of one of the darkest moments in history. Jesus had been crucified, and it had looked hopeless. Many had lost heart and ran away. They probably feared for their own lives. But then Jesus arose from the dead, and he appeared to them. He had kept his promise to never leave or forsake them, and he had come through for them. As a result, expectancy abounded. An attitude of expectancy starts by looking at the promises and goodness of God. What has he already done in our life? When we focus on what he has done in us and through us, an eager expectation is the natural result. Wait with expectancy. Rest in him and wait. For years, Jesus spent time investing in the disciples and preparing them for the mission before them. He challenged them to live for a bigger cause and left them with what seemed like an impossible mission. After appearing to them, he told them to wait for the Holy Spirit and to receive power to carry out this mission. The secret to waiting is expectancy. When you believe God will do what he says, you will not give up waiting for his timing. Expectancy flourishes when our priorities are in order. Yeah, I love when it says, 
realize that an attitude of expectancy starts and ends with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't want to get way too practical with this. I don't want to bore everybody. But when you think about it, okay, your attitude is determined by what you're thinking about. Okay, if you have a bad attitude, you're probably focusing on the negatives. If you have a good attitude, you're probably focusing on the good things. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we need to make sure that we are focusing on him. Yeah. Because we're so often so easily distracted and our minds are filled on things that are negative or things that aren't happening or what we wish we had. I mean, and gosh, I'll just, I'll just, I'm just going to rant for a sec. Can I just tell Go you how it. much I hate the news? Everything is so negative all the time. Want to know why? Because that appeals to us. It's like, it's like watching a car crash. You can't take your eyes off of it. And the media knows it. Society knows it. And we're just being constantly bombarded with negativity and hardship. And, and it's just, it's so tough. And we need to make sure that we're not feeling that negativity in our eyes. Because then it'll, it'll give us a very jaded perception on everything else that's happening around us. And you can't believe it anyway. So, so <laughs> all I'm going to say is, is this. Whenever that devotional said it starts and ends with Jesus, we have to yeah. make sure that that's true in our own life. Just like what Tori was saying yesterday, it's our choice. Mm -hmm. It's our choice to say, yes, the, the world is, is crumbling around me. I'm going to put my eyes on him. I'm going to remember his goodness, his faithfulness, his yeah. mercy, his peace. His, like I'm going to remember him in right. this moment. And that will help us persevere in times of waiting. Yeah. That'll help us keep the faith and, and fight the good fight. Mm -hmm. These are things that we have to do, but it's, a, it's an active choice on our behalf to not just like be a victim of the constant barrage of negativity that you're being hit with. Yeah, it's so good. I mean, it's literally biblical to fix our focus, right? It's like the word fix, right? Means something needs to change. Something is off. And so fix our gaze. Mm -hmm. Where was your gaze? What were you looking at? Because we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. We need to pivot. We need to turn. We need to realize what's impacting us. We need to realize what we're consuming and have that awareness because so many people are walking around completely blind. And that's not like a condemning statement. It's a reality. I mean, it's scriptural. There's so many people walking around, not awake to what's happening in, in the spiritual realm. And so we need to always be prayerful. Lord, wake me up to what is actually mm -hmm. happening and help me fix my gaze on you. Help me fix my eyes on eternity. Help me fix my eyes on Jesus returning. Because truly, if we live as if Jesus was returning tomorrow, I think we would live our day-to-day -day life very differently. And the reality is he could come at any moment, right? Like we don't know. The Bible says we are not to know when he is going to return, but we need to live in a way through the power of the Holy Spirit to live out the great commission every single day, to be set apart, to make disciples, to live in a way that ushers in more people to his kingdom because we don't know when he's coming back. And so to live with that hopeful expectancy that he's coming, that we will get to meet him face to face. Like what a beautiful picture. It's hard to focus on the small happenings in your everyday life. And they might not be small. They might be big, but when we fix our gaze on Jesus, everything changes. And when your perspective shifts, I feel like everything else shifts. And so, yeah. yeah, I was trying to find this verse and I don't know if I found the exact one I was looking for, but it's about why Isaac built an altar to the Lord and he called upon the Lord. And the reason I'm mentioning this is, is because like Tori is pretty good at this because she journals her prayers and it's really powerful, but so she can go back and see answered prayers. And that's why we encourage it, because if you are struggling remembering the goodness of God and having that attitude of how things start and end with Jesus, then it'll be hard to remember his goodness in those hard moments. Mm -hmm. And um, it is, uh, what scripture is this? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm not in the Bible right now. It's Genesis chapter 26, verse 24, and it says this, That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you, and you will receive the number of descendants for the sake of my servant, Abraham. And that's like a repeated promise. God promised that to Abraham, and now he's reiterating it to his son. Yeah. 
And so I just think that's really powerful. And there, Isaac, the next verse goes, so he built an altar right there. And I just think that we need to metaphorically build those altars in our life that re- that remember the promises of God, that remind us of the promises of God. So good. Want to pray something out? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that we get to live inside of your promises, that we get to live with hopeful expectancy that we will get to meet you face to face that Jesus will be returning to restore your kingdom father what a beautiful picture something we can't fully imagine or comprehend but just so glorious father I pray that that eternal perspective would infiltrate our daily life our everyday mundane that you would teach us to truly live through the power of the Holy Spirit, to make disciples, to love people better, to live on mission, Father. Would you give us this hopeful expectancy today? Would you help us fix our gaze and fix our eyes on Jesus and not the things of this world? We need your help to do this. So we are praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. When now is that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget that we love you. We love you guys. And we're talking to you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao, ciao.